Hi, my name is Peter Coffin, and this crazy list just came out. Um, 50 people you wish you knew in real life. Can you believe this list? A lot of redacted stuff on this list. That's not the list I'm talking about. It's the Epstein one. That's right, more than 900 pages of mostly unredacted documents were released on Wednesday. So what's in these court documents? Well, it's basically a bunch of people who have some association with Jeffrey Epstein as notated by witnesses and other sources. In other words, is it a list of pedophiles? Maybe, kinda, probably, ish. I mean, we kind of all know what's going on when it comes to the elite and this big child trafficking ring that Jeffrey Epstein was proven to have run. So I've seen a lot of people acting like stuff is going to change now that this list has been released. And I want to call to attention some other things that have been released by the government in the past. You see, in the 1960s and 70s, a whole lot of stuff happened uh, at the behest of the U.S. government that was really slimy. There's stuff like MK Ultra, where the CIA developed all of these uh, processes for using psychedelics for interrogation and training of assets and basically fucked a bunch of people up to make them useful for the government in some way. The FBI sent a letter to Martin Luther King Jr. telling him to kill himself. They also infiltrated the Black Panthers and instigated a lot of their more radical, violent actions that are looked back at as terrorism. And the U.S. government has disclosed all of that. And that worked on a lot of people. There's a whole lot of people that think the government isn't doing this kind of stuff anymore because it's all bad. A government that would call out all this bad behavior can't be bad, right? It's just all those previous people in the government that were bad. The government's not bad, the government's good, right? It's a good thing. Nowadays, the government exists to expose people like Jeffrey Epstein, who was running a big old child trafficking ring that wasn't some kind of blackmail project in order to keep certain aspects of the ruling class in line. It wasn't uh, a unification project to stop factions from forming within the bourgeoisie. It wasn't anything like that. Forget, all, forget I said any of that. Just, just don't, don't, don't worry about any of that. The point is we have a list of baddies. And what do we do with lists of baddies? Why? We destroy their reputation so we can take their social capital away. And that fixes everything. Wait, uh, so most of the people on this list um, have capital? Capital? Hmm. That, uh, that, that didn't occur to me. Hmm. Destroying the social capital. It, it only works when they don't have the capital capital. Because uh, uh, the capital capital is... Why they have power. Huh. Well, we'll get them in the legal system, right? Now coming from a lawyer point of view, let's say. This is basically just a bunch of people who have associated with Jeffrey Epstein at some point. In terms of what that proves in court, uh, nothing, actually. Which, eh kind of sucks. It might trigger the court of public opinion to do some things, but uh, let's talk about uh, what class is primarily affected here. So why are laws made? Well, laws are made to facilitate all of the major interactions of society, uh, ones that are repeated enough to warrant regulation. And I've made this critique of, like, diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in corporations. They basically exist as liability nullifiers. When a member of a minority experiences some kind of problem that stems from their minority status and they sue a company, what they do is create a legal precedent for that type of action. It doesn't stop the type of behaviors and interactions we're talking about. In fact, if you've ever had any kind of interaction with a human resources department, you probably know that although they act like their function is to protect you, uh, the human, they actually view you as a resource, which is to be 
managed and liabilities are to be minimized. And that corporate bureaucracy certainly exists within a private space, but the laws that dictate it and ultimately make it possible, oh, they public. And the legal system is meant to what? Well, according to the United States, the legal system exists to enforce the law and defend the interests of the United States according to the law, to ensure public safety against threats, foreign and domestic, to provide federal leadership in preventing and controlling crime, to seek just punishment for those guilty of unlawful behavior, and to ensure fair and impartial administration of justice for all Americans. Which is a pretty fancy way of saying maintaining order. The real trick here is um, defending the interests of the United States. What is the United States? The United States is a capitalist country that has reached the imperial stage and more or less views itself as the ruling country of the world. So what are the interests of the United States? Well, if we weren't classifying people according to a material relationship to means of production and thus power, it would be the interests of the people in the United States. But being a capitalist country, there is a ruling class and it is as I said earlier, the capitalists. The interests of the United States are thus the interests of the ruling capitalist class. So the legal system in the United States is dedicated to upholding the interests of the people holding the levers of power in the United States. Which is to say the capitalist country's justice system reinforces the interests of the capitalists. This is actually at the heart of a large number of the videos I've made in the recent months. It's grammar guys talking about plagiarism is an ethical issue. He's not talking about IP law at all. Blah, 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 blah. Well, ethics are unofficial ideology, which ultimately supports the ruling capitalist class and IP law is the formalization of those ethics. That's why it doesn't really matter if somebody wants to talk about IP law or not. If they're bringing up plagiarism, they damn well better. But that's an ancillary point to what I want to say today. We can't really say that the legal system is transparent because they had to decide to release this list of people. And we can't really say that the point of releasing this list of people is to prosecute or engage any legal procedure whatsoever. If the point of the legal system was to uniformly across the board prosecute all those who were involved in crimes, then it, we don't even have to know this list of names. They should be prosecuting these people. And in terms of information, they have prosecuted Ghislaine or Ghislaine or however you say her stupid name. They've prosecuted her. They found her guilty. And in that process and prior legal processes involving Epstein, they have acquired a lot of information, including most likely client lists, none of which have been prosecuted. Basically, what I'm trying to do here is to burst that little bubble inside your brain that is saying, wow, things are going to get better now because people aren't talking about it from a class perspective which means people are not viewing it as an issue of the ruling class. They might be saying the word elite. They might regard these folks as maybe seeing themselves as better than us. But in reality, this is not a discussion about material relationships to means of production and thus power. It is a discussion about who has done bad things and if they will be punished. All this Epstein shit, whether it's what I said earlier, some complicated blackmail scheme, or just what these people do, it's a symptom. That isn't to say it's good. I think sexual assault and uh, human trafficking, those things are uh, beyond fucked. But even if you punished every single person on that list, big deal. The relations of power remain the same. The names might change around. You might have a whole new generation of kinder, gentler bourgeoisie. But it's not their temperament that is the problem. It's that we exist in a society built upon 
a, a contradiction that spirals us inevitably towards crisis again and again. The socialization of production amid the private appropriation of product and therefore profit centralizes wealth because the worker, the people doing the work that don't own the means of production, don't get paid the entire value of their labor. They can never truly buy back everything they have given, meaning over time, it is inevitable that the working class, the subordinate class, is not going to be able to operate in the consumer market. Throw in automation and make it so that you can produce more things with less human labor, devaluing the end product, but also making it easier to make more to attempt to compensate for the loss of profits. And you have this recipe for endless crisis. That's the problem of capitalism. Not that the billionaires are these greedy bad guys who need to change their behavior and give away everything that they've gotten, all those ill-gotten gains. It's not fair is a stupid critique of capitalism. It's very easy to say the law is on the side of the ruling class. Uh, you can point towards the fact that lobbying is just straightforwardly legal and not even viewed as abnormal. But you watch what happens to those names on any lists that are released involving Jeffrey Epstein. It's not going to be shit. It's going to be a big list of sleeping dogs that are allowed to lie. And I'm not telling you that simply understanding things is going to fix them. I am telling you that we should start operating on actual understandings of what's going on. If our pursuit is just that the baddies on this list get punished, then we're basically setting up a situation for new baddies to come in and do whatever. That's, again, the same problem I've got with H. Bomber guys, plagiarism critique. It, it, it completely ignores, in fact, discourages any kind of systemic approach to the topic. And I'm still getting a bunch of angry comments on those videos. It's actually completely nuts. But I have to bring it up here because it's extremely relevant. People really don't understand the importance or even the idea of systemic critique. And that's why I'm making this. Well, I may not reach a ton of people saying this. I don't want people to think that just because a list of baddies from the ruling class has been outlined that things are changing or people are actually being held accountable. Because, it, sure, let's say you prosecute a thousand sexual predators. A thousand. That's a lot. And it takes a lot of effort to do. What does that change about sexual assault? Shit. Nothing. Absolutely not a goddamn thing. You can look up uh, study after study from many different areas and of different authors of many different political stripes. If you actually track results, you find that it doesn't actually do a lot. The punitive justice system only continues to reproduce the same results. And, and that's just to be clear, not to defend anybody on this list who turns out to be a pedophile. I am zero tolerance with that shit. I have kids. Uh, I care dearly for them. And if somebody touched them, I would fucking kill them. It is not even a question for me. I would murder so fast based on that pretense. And I'm guessing that most parents would be like, yep, I get it. Sure. I would probably get in trouble for that murder. But these folks, they ain't going to get in any big trouble. Watch. You think Bill Clinton's going to go to jail because he rode Lolita Express 28 times? You think that? You think justice is going to come to old Sudsy McKill Staffer himself? It ain't. Not until things change. That's why systemic critique matters. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I hope you have a nice day.